Hi, this is attorney David Gibbs with the National Center for Life and Liberty. Across the nation, more areas are adding what have been labeled stay-at-home orders for their citizens with the goal of trying to stop the spread of COVID-19. Churches and ministries across the nation are determining how do they most effectively minister to those in their care during this unusual moment in our nation's history. It's very important that churches understand that these orders do have an impact on them and we're encouraging number one for churches to know the public health and state mandates that are in place for their particular area. Now it's also number two important to know that depending on the state the directives for non-compliance have varying penalties some states even threatening to put people in jail for non-compliance. Number three, the National Center for Life and Liberty's website has links to the government agencies with all of these different areas covered. So if you're looking for a place to try to figure out what's impacting your region, you can visit ncll.org. Now, generally speaking, my friend, the state orders include four things. And number one, that all non-essential employees work from home or stay home. Now, uh, it's a broad scope as to what is essential or non-essential, but generally first responders, those that are in the food chain, those that are in home repair, uh, those that are in medical services are all deemed essential. Number two, that all restaurants and bars are closed and certainly not allowing people to gather there. Many are allowing takeout, but no one to go into the restaurants. Number three, that all gatherings need to be limited to 10 or less individuals. And then number four, that all events are indefinitely suspended. And so this is impacting uh, many graduations and other events across the nation. The question at the NCAA we're being asked is, should our church continue to meet? Now, while each state has varying levels of implementation, we would recommend compliance due to the nature of this public health crisis. If your church or ministry is trying to decide if it should or should not continue to meet, we'd like to give you some criteria to consider as you weigh out these issues. Number one, does my state, does my area have a stay at home order in place? Number two, is my area of the country particularly affected at this time with COVID-19? Number three, am I potentially placing people at risk by having them attend church. Number four, are there safer alternatives to meeting in groups at this time? As churches weigh through these, there's a fifth question that I believe is very paramount. How can I serve our church members most effectively? At the National Center for Life and Liberty, we are recommending that certainly churches do some things that many of you have already done. But number one, that you have a virtual service option. This can be done with live stream or Facebook Live, but for the next few weeks, be looking at getting messages and information to your congregation through an online outlet. If your church wants to allow people to attend, and if you can, please review your state guidelines to ensure that you're not placing your attendees at risk. Number three, if you do choose to have some church members in attendance on the property, ensure that you're keeping people spread out from one another, limiting exposure between the individuals. The National Center for Life and Liberty's website at ncll.org has some recommendations that you can review. My friend, we are living in an unprecedented time in the United States. Our president has asked that we not meet in groups more than 10. Many states are asking non-essential employees to stay at home during this time. This is a time of great confusion and heartbreak across the nation. And the church is needed more than ever as there's fear and, and sadness through the people. Could I challenge you to strive to be the church as we want to so desperately minister to those who've been negatively affected? None of this catches God by surprise, and indeed the church is his instrument to minister across our nation.